we're all one agency now. Now, what do we all bring to the table that is unique and different and can power our team in such a bigger way? If your stuff is working and you've put the time, energy, and effort into making sure that we're keeping it updated, it's a lot less traumatic for both parties. Hi, welcome. Bobby Fernandez here with the amazing Stephen Harrington Dakota, who just had his one year anniversary here with a happy anniversary, Stephen. Yes, I'm so it was happy my, to have you. It was my technical as an employee one year anniversary, which I yeah. think is hilarious because I actually had been working with APP as a contractor for a short time. <laughs> Coming on as an actual employee. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you're well. You're pretty well known around uh, around the continent here. I'll tell you, my my client in Pennsylvania. When I was there the other day, they definitely said we would like a we, we would like a cameo from the diva at some point during our program. So they're we, very we will make it happen. Yeah, they're very excited to meet you. So this is a blessing. Thank you very much that we get to be here <laughs> and we get to talk about this. Everything we're doing this month is talking about agency acquisitions, mergers, bringing teams together. And I know that this is something that you and I both have a lot of experience with. And so, let's grow. Hey, yeah, <laughs> let's grow, man. I think, you know, in this market, we were seeing a lot previously of you know, large entities acquiring private equity, the bigger guys, like yep. the, the, all the large companies were gobbling everything up. Yeah. And now we're seeing, should we tell the secret? Can I share a secret? Yeah, please. I am seeing so many small, hungry agencies that are wanting to grow. They're lean and mean. They're getting their crap together. They're streamlining their processes. They are getting everything in place to be successful. And part of their growth plan is like, I'm going to reach out to other small, independent agents that are maybe struggling or ready for retirement or don't want to handle the current market we're in. And I'm just going to Start making offers. I'm going to put my name out there. I'm going to, instead of, instead of going door to door selling insurance, I'm going agency to agency buying them up. Yeah, they are ripe for the picking. And I think, you know, you said a couple of great things there that I want to lean into a little bit. One is, you know, get your house in order. Yeah. Now's the time, right? I mean, I think about it kind of like the real estate market. If we were going to sell our house, we got to get our house in order to make sure that we're going to sell our house and maximize what we're going to get for, for that investment. And so right now is a great time for these smaller agencies, especially with the market that we're in, because there's a lot of agencies out there with retiring principals that, like you said, they don't, they don't want to deal with this market. Mm -hmm. If they're tired, they've done enough and they are ripe for the picking. Or they just don't have their house in order and they're finally burnt out. And they're like, my staff is crispy. I'm getting crispy. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to make an offer? Shut up. I never thought about it before. I had a good friend that I've known. We both been in insurance over 20 years together. Like we started going to the same conferences. We worked with the same carriers. Like we were about 70 to 100 miles apart, but we like ran in the same insurance circles because we were both young and hungry as well. Mm -hmm. And she called the other day. She's like, I'm selling my agent. Mm. I'm like, shut up. Like, you are 40 some years old. She's like, yep. She's like, it's time for me to do something. Like, I have a couple of carriers. Everything's okay. Like, I don't hate my job, but I know the market's changing and I don't like this is not my passion any longer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I know three people that are amazing in the area that are growing, one of which we work with. Like, let me give you some names and start making some calls. Right. Yeah. And and I think that people are just coming to the conclusion that they're going to live their best life. Too. Mm -hmm. So now, so it's old. It's an older person retiring, or that everything's broken. Sometimes people are just like, you know what? It's time. Like I did it. It was great. It's just not my passion any longer. But you have to be prepared, and I think that's kind of what we're going to talk about today: is what happens when you do get lucky enough to apply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think you know it, it's all about finding the right agency. You want to make sure, you know, that you're aligned, right? I think when we when we try and force a square peg into the round hole, it can be challenging. Sometimes agency principals go out or 
where acquisition teams go out and they they look for an opportunity and and kind of like we do with our salespeople, not every opportunity is a good opportunity, right? <laughs> yes, I taught. Yes, I think I did a a whole like conversation in one of our other ones about like, is it really the right fit? Like, just because it's like dating, right? Just because I go on a date with you doesn't mean that we're going to get married. <laughs> Yeah. Right. First date might be okay, but we're going to find all the things as we start getting in into it. And we yeah. have to decide, is it a good fit for us as well? Like mm-hmm. people get so excited. Like I get calls all the time from some of my clients that are like, shut up. I just got a call and so-and-so wants to sell. I'm like, great. Like, let's stop and take a deep breath. Like all my meditation after like three deep breaths, um, hold it in for three seconds, let it go. And I'm like, okay, great. So what, how are they culturally aligned with your culture? How are they, you know, mm-hmm. what systems and processes are in place? What management system? And we go through kind of like a checklist. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is a horrible fit for you. Like your shit's not, excuse my language, your things are not clean enough. Yeah. The processes aren't strong enough for you to take somebody else on that's also a map. Right. I mean, if you're, if you're operating an agency that you're dealing with high value clientele and and you have some, you know, different types of service level things going on for your clients. And I'm, and I'm operating a non-standard kind of churn and burn auto shop. Is that really the perfect marriage? I mean, if we're looking to expand and it's something like we're very specific for, maybe. But we have to, again, ask the questions and really go through and make sure. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? There's yeah. nothing worse than trying to blend oil and vinegar together to, you know, make a perfect marriage when it comes to agency acquisition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so a strong plan is going to be important, right? And really understanding what you're getting into. I know there was a time we at an agency many moons ago that I worked at, we purchased an agency and you know, you assume that everybody does their due diligence and everybody's transparent and honest about all of it. And then, you know, we walked into the agency and there were literally stacks and stacks and stacks of policies and paper and checks that had never been cashed or never sent to bind coverage from insureds. And I mean, we tortured ourselves for months trying to clean it up and clean it out and understand what was going on with the business. And ultimately it ended up falling apart. Mm-hmm. It just ended up falling apart because it wasn't a good fit, but the investment made on both agencies to try and make that work, the people, the time, the effort that it takes to do all of that, to then understand almost a year later that it wasn't a good fit really felt counterintuitive. We could have been spending our times doing things that were more profitable for growth for our agency. Right. One of my favorite acquisitions that I remember is it was the all paper agency with an Excel document. Like <laughs> the client, the clients were all tracked in Excel. Okay. And the office manager it's got me from that agency. That was it's talking a, about well Jan no, Kelly. it was all still paper files, but the Excel list was to send out their calendars every year. It was just like name and address and the last right. time they got sent the calendar. Like it was not, <laughs> it was not policy numbers or types or whatever. Yeah. And the agency manager at the time was a very small office, found out that the the owner was thinking about selling and deleted the Excel list and erased the computer. And then left in the middle of the night, right? Oh. And so me running a larger agency got to spend two weeks at this agency to keep the agency running so that we could finish the acquisition, Mm, right? I mean, we got an amazing deal on it because I had to do all the research and we had to do all the due diligence and it was all paper file. Mm -hmm. But I ended up running an office basically for free for two two, three weeks until the deal got closed just to make sure that it wasn't going completely dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. Was that really the best use of my time? Probably not, but there was no other options at the time. I I had no additional staff I could put in there. Like I was the most flexible one. Well, and I think not every, you know, we, we tell a lot of, a lot of war stories, I think, and a lot of negative things, but there are also great, great, 
great, wonderful acquisitions that she they, wouldn't acquire. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of great that comes with acquiring another agency and another team. We get to expand our reach. We get to expand our client base. We get to a lot of times we get access to different carriers or different technology that we get mm-hmm. to bring to our clientele. And we get the opportunity to bring teams together, which I, I think can be really fun. Well, and I think that that's really, you're pushing an important point there, right? Like what are the positives and what do we really have to do to be prepared? Mm-hmm. And if w- this w- if this would have been our first acquisition, like I would have lost <laughs> my mind and never done it again. Fortunately, I think it was our eighth or ninth. Like, I was like, we've done this before. Like, yeah, we can do what we got to do to make it happen. Right. Another one that we did was amazing. Like, it rolled in perfectly. They were on a different system, but it all downloaded. We did a data conversion. The conversion came in nice because we knew what we were doing. We had to spend a couple of weeks onboarding the new team, but we already had an onboarding process for new hires. Mm-hmm. And we just had the whole team at the other location go through our onboarding process, right? Just like they were a new employee. They got to watch the same videos everybody else had seen. They got to learn the management system. They got to learn the new phone system, just like they were a new employee. And we took a couple of things that they were doing great, and we had to teach the rest of the team how to do things that they were doing wonderful. And I think that that's really, really kind of the point of the conversation today is what can we do to blend and merge with the least amount of turmoil possible? And how do we make it successful for both sides, right? Just because just because I'm the agency doing the acquisition doesn't mean everything I do is perfect. Sure. But as part of the discovery process, I might find something I love at another agency. And that might be a reason to acquire the agency, right? Just for the process of the procedures or whatever they're doing alone. And some agencies right. have it locked down and I need, or they have a great leader. And I'm like, shut up. Like, I will literally do whatever I need to to make this leader happy to come to my agency and help me with time. Yeah. And I love, you know, what you're talking about there because you have a strong plan, right? So Mm -hmm. if we have a strong plan to integrate agencies and we have a strong plan to really integrate the teams, I know I've done a lot of acquisition and merger over the years. And I think. You know, some of the biggest things I see are teams feeling disheartened, like maybe they don't have a voice or, you know, they weren't necessarily onboarded thoughtfully and they feel kind of left out on on an island unto themselves. And then we kind of get into that us versus them mentality instead of we're all one agency now. Now, what do we all bring to the table? that is unique and different and can power our team in such a bigger way. And I think that's a lot of times where we miss the mark. We start to put on that defensive armor because we don't feel like we're part of something. And so I think we have to be very intentional to make people feel part of something. Give them the training that they need. Give them the tools that they need. This is going to mean change for both teams. It's both teams adopting change here. You know, I think the the existing team needs to understand they're they're going to have to do as much learning and growing and adopting of new processes and procedures, um, new potential service things that we're going to be able to provide for our clients. And they're going to have to learn and train on those things too and how to deliver that information and how to service new accounts and introduce themselves to a whole group of new, wonderful people to love and serve. I think when your house is in order, you have things pretty much in place and then you're bringing other people in. It's just like onboarding any new employee, right? And if your stuff is working and you've put the time, energy and effort into making sure that we're keeping it updated, it's a lot less traumatic for both parties. I agree. Right. Like I'm working with an agency right now that's looking at acquisition and they were doing some interviews of the existing team at that agency. And they're like, oh my goodness, like it's toxic, it's whatever. Like the the queen bee, like the owner wanted to take queen queen bee to still run the team and she's going to be a horrible fit for our culture. I'm like, then we need to not do this acquisition. Mm. Or we need to renegotiate and Queen Bee needs to go, right? Like, sorry, not sorry, but 
why are we going to buy a problem just because the owner doesn't want to step up and be like, fine, like, and they wanted it contractually in there, like that the person would be there for 12 months. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's great, but we need to either redefine the role and keep her away from everybody else. Like we need to have a game plan or we need to step away Mm -hmm. or we need to renegotiate, right? We need to have some non-negotiable because we don't want that to also come in and start toxifying our culture. Yeah. If we worked hard to get it to where it needs to be. Well, and I think that all goes to communication. You know, Mm -hmm. it's all about let's communicate often. Let's communicate frequently. When we think we've communicated enough, guess what I want you to do? Communicate Communicate again. (laughs) (laughs) Because somebody is always going to say, I didn't get enough communication. And those people that they, they are, they're good. They'll just tune it out and they'll shut it off. But we got to keep that communication going and we got to keep that feedback loop going too. I think we need to give people an opportunity to tell us what is working, what is not working. And as leaders, we have to be open to receive that Mm -hmm. and make changes and then share back with the team the changes that we are making, because I think that's how they feel included and we create a really inclusive and diverse em- environment for our teams to really propel our agencies forward and be dynamic. And one thing I tell a lot of staff members when I work with them during acquisition and merger is no agency buys a profitable agency to run it into the ground team. <laughs> so, I'm not about you too. We are not, we are not pretty woman where we are buying the the shipyard to tear it apart and sell it piece by piece right we're gonna build big ship right (laughs) we are integrating here we are (laughs) we're trying to have a happy marriage we're bringing two we're bringing agencies together to create something more dynamic and so So you want to be more brady bunch and let you know wars them yeah for sure for sure so I think, you know, this was a great conversation. I appreciate it. Steven is in Arizona today. <laughs> I am coming at you from Knoxville, Tennessee. And hey, Tennessee. So he is several hours ahead of me. So it is bright and early, but you are looking fly. We've got this swoop. I have, I have very can- tall hair, like I big hair in Texas and in Arizona for some reason. Something about the dry heat that makes my hair extra tall. Very strong today. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I love it. So we appreciate you getting up early and giving us Absolutely. all your expertise and advice. And I think this was a really fun conversation. Hopefully everybody got a lot out of it. We have a lot of resources for you. If you need help or you have questions about acquisition, merger, we're here for you guys. We want to be your friend through this. We set up a meeting with us. We have some free resources on our website. You can take our agency quiz and we have our product this month is agency acquisition. So feel free to book a meeting with Steven or myself. We're here to help you. And I also have a free tip. Ooh, tips. We love If we're working together and you're in the acquisition mindset, I make you do our 10 process pack as part of our, as part of our assessment or as part of our custom training plan. So you can go get the 10 process pack and start that and work. Like if you are like gung ho, do it yourself, do the online school, get the 10 process pack and really start working through it just to make sure your issues in order. Because it goes through the 10 most important parts, like how to handle cancellation. How do we answer the phone? Like certain things that we need to set a standard for, for the agency anyway. That's That's absolutely free advice for some of you out there. Free advice. And guess what? (laughs) We have 15% off all store products this month. So use, use the code, go get the process packs. You can do DIY it. Or you can use us, but I think the moral of this story is get your house in order. And then grow it. And then let's grow it. (laughs) So let's grow, teams. We'll see you soon. Let's grow, teams. Grow. Bye, guys. Bye.